Well, over the course of this brief video, I'm going to show you how to calculate depreciation utilizing the straight line method. There are several different alternatives for how to calculate depreciation. The straight line method is by far the most simplistic and easiest to do. Uh, it's also fairly common, although you do see companies utilize different methods uh, on different levels. Uh, so the reason that we calculate depreciation first, obviously, is because of accounting. Uh, we know that we can't necessarily claim the value of an asset uh, as the same over a period of time. So for example, if we purchase something like a company vehicle, and say we purchase it for $20,000 right off the lot, we know that over time, that vehicle will not be worth the same that it was when we purchased it. Not only is it going to accrue mileage, but there's going to be additional wear and tear, uh, that is going to make it worth less. And so for, for assets, we depreciate those because we know that they lose value over time. Same thing with equipment like laptops and different things. They begin to deteriorate over time, so we can't claim the value of those as assets on our balance sheets. So how do we go ahead and do this? There's a, a basic equation for how to calculate depreciation utilizing the straight line method. The first thing that we need to know is the purchase price of that particular asset. So this is the amount that we actually purchased it for. And then what we need to do is we need to determine a salvage value. And so we factor out what's called a salvage value, and I'll explain more about what that is. And then what we do is we divide that by what we call our estimated useful life. And the estimated useful life is really how long do we feel like this asset is going to be useful. Uh, the IRS or the Internal Revenue Service uh, usually has uh, guidelines with regards to how long you can depreciate a particular asset. Uh, so typically it's around five years and after five years you can no longer depreciate an asset. Uh, and the reason that's done is to make sure that you can't necessarily extend the value of an asset over a long period of time because at some point, assets are no longer going to be useful. They're not going to work to the capacity they did before. Now, one thing I will say is that simply because you've depreciated an entire asset, its entire value, that means that you can't claim it as an asset on your balance sheet, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to replace that particular asset. So with a vehicle example, if you've depreciated the entire value of the vehicle, that doesn't mean that you have to get rid of it and you have to purchase a new vehicle. That merely means for accounting purposes, you can no longer claim that vehicle as an asset for purposes of writing it up on your balance sheet. But you can certainly still use it. It certainly still provides you use because it's still reliable transportation and it typically means you don't have to actually pay a monthly car payment or a lease, but you still can't claim it as value. So let me give you an example. Let's work through this equation very quickly here, just so you can see how this would work. So the first thing we need to do is figure out a purchase price. So let's say that we purchase a company vehicle like a truck of some sort, and our initial purchase price is about $30,000. Uh, the next thing we need to know is a salvage value. Even before we get to that, we need to know how long do we think we can use this for based upon mileage, based upon wear and tear and how much our employees actually use it, but also based upon IRS guidelines. Let's just go ahead and say that we can actually use this for five years. And after five years, the salvage value is what we feel like we would be able to sell the vehicle for in this case, either if it's just simply for parts or it's selling it in its present condition, whatever we feel like we can get out of the vehicle. So let's say that after five years with the wear and tear that we're gonna do, we feel pretty confident that we can get $5,000 out of this particular asset here. So if you take $5,000 from 30,000, that gets you $25,000. And if we divide that by five, what that does is that gets us $5,000 every year. And so what that means is that every single year, we would depreciate that asset by $5,000. So in the first year, we're going to claim the full value of the asset. We're going to claim that we have $30,000 because that is what the vehicle is worth. That's what we paid for it. In the next year, we would actually claim $25,000 because we're taking five years off of that asset. The next year, we would accumulate 
uh, $10,000 in depreciation, so we only claim 20, and then so on and so forth until the entire asset is depreciated, and that means that we can no longer claim any of its value. Now, as I said before, simply because that happens does not mean you need to replace the asset. It merely means that we cannot claim it as having any value on our balance sheets.